When I present agent-based models to people, many of them actually raise a series of issues with this methodology. Some ask, do we really need such a method? Why don't we just use linear methods or other statistical approaches which are well developed? Why in the universe should we use something else? Some other people complain because these models are too complex and they're very, very hard to understand. Can't we just make them simpler? While other people instead say that actually these models are too simplistic. Do we really believe that humans can be modeled in such a simple way with a series of simple rules? I think the sun should take a decision because it's, it's blinding me at the moment. Anyway, today we are going to discuss about agent-based models and we will try to address many of these problems and we will see actually if agent-based models are just a scam or a buzzword or actually they really deserve more attention, especially in the social sciences. And we'll also try to clarify a lot of confusion about some peculiarities of agent-based models. Anyway, welcome back everyone, I'm Dino Carpentras and this is Social Complexity, the channel when we unravel the complexity of human behavior and social structures, which is a fancy way to say social complexity. So without further ado, let's jump into the first argument, which is the fact that we don't really need agent-based models, but we can directly use simpler methods like linear regression. Now, instead of directly answering this argument, I want to raise another question. And I want to start from the idea that some way human beings, especially society, is much more complex than inner matter. To say that some way like I'm more complex than this man, to some level. Now, this sometimes brings people in the social sciences to make claims like humans are complex, matter is simple which is not. But the point here is, I think everyone can agree that humans, living beings, are more complex than the rest. So, if this is the case, why, for human beings, we use linear models, or simple statistical models like this, but then, for things from physics, we use very more advanced models, like this. So I think there is something wrong here because it's clearly that we're moving from physics simple to humans complex, but then the mathematical modeling is doing the opposite. It's moving from complex to simple. So what, what, what is happening here? So the beauty and the power of agent-based models is that actually they have been designed exactly for this, for dealing for more complex systems for things like human systems. Because instead of trying to model something as a particle or a wave or whatever we want to do in the physical systems, we are using, in agent-based models, models which are based on agents. Agents which can interact, they can update their system, they can interact with the environment, and they can do a lot of things which actually map very well with the real social world. However, this brings us to the second argument, which is that agent-based models, unfortunately, are too simple to model actually the real social environment. Therefore, we should not really use them. And the funny thing is that I've seen a similar argument when people are trying some way to claim that science is limited, therefore is like magic, religion, faith, whatever. Or for example, when we are suggesting like new cures, like vaccination, people say like, you know what? You can get a disease also with vaccination. Therefore, vaccines are completely useless. What I'm trying to say is that definitely agent-based models are not perfect. They cannot match one-to-one -one the complexity of reality because reality is very complex. Agent-based models are complex but not to that level. And also if they were at that level, probably we won't be able to use anything from them because they would be too complex and we won't be able to understand them. So if you imagine a continuum, a spectrum, you would have that here you have the complexity of the real system. Maybe you have agent-based models here, so it's quite far, but linear models are not here. 
They are on the opposite side. They are even simpler than agent-based models. So if someone is claiming that agent-based models are too simple, the same person should also claim that linear models are even simpler. So if you are not ready to use agent-based models, you should definitely not use linear models. The only good reason that I see to discard agent-based models in favor of linear models is because agent-based models are new, so many people don't know how to use them, so I can, they can make a lot of mistakes in using them, and also they are not well established. While almost everyone has been trained with linear models, so they are easier to use and easier to communicate. If you get results from linear models, you can publish very easily. However, this is a completely different argument. This is like, yes, agent-based models are going in the right direction, but they're quite hard. I prefer to use something simpler. Or maybe for my simple experimental design, I don't need something that complex. Whatever is fine, but I think that it needs to be clear that if your problem is about them not being sufficiently complex, then all the other methods we had so far are not a good solution. Another important thing is that there is a distinction already in agent-based models between, let's say, two different types of models. There are toy models, which actually are not very complex, and more realistic models, which try to go into more the direction of complexity. Now, depending on the model you use, you will try to make different arguments. So for example, with more realistic models, especially if you validate them, you can make also predictions and you can make arguments about what would be the best policy to make. Instead, with more simple models, like toy models, Usually, you should not make arguments about policy and all these kind of things, but you're mostly studying how certain phenomena actually connect to other phenomena. Like, for example, how certain rules can give rise to certain macroscopic phenomena. For example, by generating emergent phenomena. Actually, we're gonna have another video where we will explain how to connect like the kind of modeling techniques that you're using to the claims that you can make example about policy. Now this brings us to the third argument, which is that agent-based models are complex, actually very complex, and I completely agree. The problem here is that we developed this new technique because we wanted to deal with complexity, and you cannot have complexity without complexity. And the funny thing here is that I see a lot of people advocating for like oh, linear models are too simplistic, we need something new, we need something fancy, let's embrace the complexity, blah, blah, blah. But then many of them, when you try to show them actually how things is done in complex systems, they kind of shy away and say like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I prefer the linear systems. Which again, it's fine. If we want to use a linear system, let's use linear systems and leave the complexity to other people. But really, we need to be clear that if we want to do complexity science, we need some complexity. What I want to say here is that in general, even in agent-based models, even if we are pushing to go into more complex systems, we still want the model to be some way as simple as possible. Mostly because when the model becomes too complex, it becomes very hard to use, and so even well-trained people start struggling in understanding actually what is going on with the model. Anyway, the world of agent-based models is actually very big, and we will cover it in a series of other videos. So let me know in the comments if you think this was useful, if you have new questions, other topics that I can cover in the next videos. Check out the channel, eventually like, do all this stuff. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Do your homework, write up your papers, and remember to embrace the beauty of complexity.